and welcome everybody. It's John the Net Guy. I know we're just a few minutes late. Oh, I'm dealing with an Amazon issue with their streaming platform. Uh, they're probably getting crushed here on Prime. Big deal days. I had to say that a bunch of times because I think I even got it wrong in the thumbnail. Uh, it is a two-day Prime event with a ton of great sales going on right now. Scepter happens just to also have a great deal going on on these monitors. And are you ready for that 240 hertz speed limit? Because every one of the monitors that I'm going to show today in this first set uh, are going to be 240 hertz. There's also a bonus ultra wide that I'm going to bring into play here. Uh, they have a great deal on a gaming ultra wide. And so we're going to see that. I've actually got all the monitors down below me here. And I'm going to pull them out. I've unboxed them. We did have one audible I have to call. Sadly, the 27 was destroyed by shipping. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. I felt so bad because it's a gorgeous monitor. And so I have a stand-in for it. It's exact same specs, just not curved. So luckily, I just happen to have a, a, a large stable of Scepter monitors. So uh, like we'd like to do in the beginning of all these shows, let me know if you can in the uh, chat here how my audio sounds. <laughs> so I see a couple people checking in already. Uh, we got Rare Apple. He's uh, one of my editors. Good to see you. He says, hello. Thanks for checking in on the YouTube. So clearly it's working there. We got that part right. Uh, also got another YouTuber checking in. So let's get started. Uh, I want to go quickly to the list of monitors uh, that we're going to do here. One second. <laughs> I got to get this New studio setup, right? There we go. So these are the monitors. There's a 25, a 27, a 32, and a 34-inch curved monitor. So every one of these is going to be curved. You can see the resolutions and the quick specs right there. I'll come back to those here in a second. The first one we're going to take a look at here is the C255B FWT240. Well, what does that mean? Well, in Scepter terms, the ending number is the hertz. So that 240, that's the 240 hertz refresh rate. So super high speed gaming monitor. And the first letter is curved or straight and then 25 in there. So that's the first panel we're going to take a look at. If you're interested in the stats on here, you know, let's go over them real quick. It is a 1080p monitor and you'll see that a lot in this size range, I very rarely see them go up any higher, especially on 24, 20, 25. It, this is technically a 24.5 inch monitor, but they call it that 25 inch class. It is a VA panel and we can talk about panel dynamics later. If you guys want, we can talk all about that. Uh, but the nice thing about the VA panel is it's going to have a very fast refresh rate. That's TN and VAs are known for their very fast refresh rates. Um, also good contrast ratio, IPS, not as much, uh, IPS has great color. Now these come in at a 99% sRGB color rating. So they're going to have all of the colors that your games are normally built by. <laughs> so, you know, the developers, you know, tuning to 99% sRGB. And if you're going to do creator cool stuff, this would be a good, a basic creators monitor. But if you're going to do color grading or print work, you're probably going to buy something honestly like this Nebula I have back here, uh, which is another great Scepter monitor, but it's a different class. It's a completely different class of monitor. So this is the monitor. I'm going to bring us back here. This is the monitor <laughs> that you can see. Uh, very neat uh, looking monitor. Let's go to the top down and I'll show you what that curve radius is all about. So you see this. So it's got that curve. Now, there's many different kinds of curves and curve monitors. They're not all the same. Even the ones we have today are not all the same. There's a 1500R curve. There's an 1800 and a 1000R. Well, what does that mean? So basically, if you were to draw an enormous circle, you know, this would be 1500 across. Um, I think it's actually centimeters. So it's a circle that would be 1500 centimeters. And then you take that and that would be where this would align perfectly. So if you get a thousand R curvature, it's actually going to be a much tighter bend. So the lower the number, the tighter the bend you'll see on some of these monitors. On a 27, a curve is kind of, you know, yes or no. You can take it or leave it. I've got two 27s sitting up here that are flat for me. They're you know, just for, you know, office work. But a gaming monitor is, is really nice, especially for long extended gaming sessions to have a curve in that monitor. So it's pretty slick. Uh, I love that. So this is their, again, 25 inch class 
monitor. I'm going to bring you around to a couple different cameras today to show you different features of these. So this is going to have a pretty basic stand. You know, it's going to have this single pull. It doesn't have an up down. It's going to have basic tilt. It's not going to have a bunch of swiveling and other capabilities. And you know what? That's what you're getting. Uh, the price on this one right now, if you want to see all of the products that are in there, check the video description for me. I'm actually going to bring it up also as well here at the bottom. You can see the scrolling ticker now. That's my Amazon shop. So if you visit that Amazon shop, you're going to get a page that looks something like this. And we're going to share it. <laughs> so there's my Amazon page, right? And there's a, a guy there. And you can go right here to the first item. And this is all of the monitors I'm showing today. The very first one here on the far right side is this monitor. And there is the super duper prime de deal days. Uh, price on this one, 23% off. It is an incredible value on this monitor. Um, very, very excited to see that. I don't know if they're going to be cheaper or more expensive on Black Friday, but kind of consider this your early Black Friday sale. So instead of waiting till after all the relatives come over, you can have a really cool gaming monitor before they come over. So another thing I wanted to point out, which is really cool on this one, the four and a half star rating on here. So when you're looking for monitors, especially on the budget uh, side of things, a lot of times the ratings are not great. You know, you're going to have a defects. You're going to have a bunch of other issues with the monitors. Uh, Scepter has come a very long way in the budget monitor space. They're incredibly price competitive and the quality I can tell you has been improving. There's a couple things I'm going to show you about that uh, as I talk. And I think they're taking feedback. Our feedback is definitely coming in and changing the designs of these monitors. So this is the monitor I have right here. We're going to try some games. Also, I don't know if you guys have uh, peeked this already behind me. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause that share for just a second. I actually have behind me my Xbox One and PS5 because I can tell you a lot of people are asking me. They're like, hey, does this work with a PS5? Will this work with my Xbox One? How about this ultra wide? Is it going to work with my Xbox One? We'll talk all about that today. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and plug this monitor in. I did test all of these a little bit earlier and got them all ready. And I even downloaded updates to some games. So we're not going to be waiting here for, you know, three hours for uh, Starfield or something to update. You know? <laughs> but here we go. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. This one happens to have four inputs. Now they're vertical inputs on the back here. So they're straight up and down versus, um, and that sometimes can be harder to reach versus the straight in, but they also will actually go closer against a wall if you have that. So this monitor does come with a visa mounting adapter and you can do that oh actually let me show you one thing too while we got it booting up here take a look at that it's got rgb on the back <laughs> how cool is that it's animated you can set colors you can do all sorts of neat stuff on here so this is the curve 27 va panel and you notice i didn't even hit the power button but it booted itself up uh let me go ahead and go to the menu system here and now you guys are going to notice the the really keen among you may have just noticed this pop up here this is completely different. It's my first experience with this. And this is what I say when I say that they are responding to feedback. Let's see if I can get you a better picture here. Look at that. That is an OSD refresh that has been sorely needed. And it actually maps exactly to the buttons. So you can go through, you can actually see the current stats. I'm at 120 hertz on this Xbox One here. So that answers that question. Yes, it does work with the Xbox One. And yes, it is high uh, refresh rate 1080p already. So very slick. I did see some questions and comments coming through here. Uh, we got a Scepter monitors are great. I have two that I use and they are awesome. Yes, the 271440p as a creator set. I showed you guys those about a year ago. Fantastic units. And we've got a nice, another person coming in saying nice features. Uh, it's a Brian Rex, a friend of mine. I think he owns about 25 Scepter monitors. <laughs> he gets the business variety, but they're great. Uh, now, don't look at my code. I'm going to go back here, see if I put it in. There we go. <laughs> Logging in. So I'm using this now. If you heard, and you may not have, I don't know if it'll come through, but there are actually speakers in this monitor. So when you get to this aggressive budget side, a lot of times you're not going to get those features. You're not going to get the curvature. You're not going to get a curved monitor. You're not going to get 240 Hertz and you definitely won't get speakers built into the monitor. You'll have to use headphones or something else. These receive the audio via the single HDMI cable 
And I'm just double checking on this one. It does, like all the other ones, have an audio output. So uh, super low price on these right now. Fantastic value. Somebody asked me on Discord, because I was kind of bragging about all these monitors earlier. They asked me on Discord. They said, what are your two, three favorites out of the, the whole list? This is one of my favorites if you're looking for an incredible value in a monitor. So it's got the HDMI CEC, as you saw. So it's got the, the automatic on off here. Let's see what kind of games we want to play. Starfield, super popular right now. So I can actually, I was already in it, so I can go through here. Now, you might not hear the audio in this, but I'm flying a spaceship. How cool is that? So <laughs> I'm out here in space, you know, just moving around. Uh, Starfield, great game. Uh, it plays well on here. I'm going to see if I can pull up another game. Forza Horizon. This is another game where you can actually use that 120 hertz refresh. Another thing that I, I like to say is it's nice to have the 240 hertz. We'll do a ghosting test here, let's say on the, the bigger monitor. Um, but if you are starting to get any sort of ghosting or anything because you're at the max end, bump it back a little bit. You know, I, I ran my 200 hertz monitor at 165, 144. Uh, what's cool, oh, my controller disconnected. No, it's right there. So there you go. So we talk about, oh, there we go. High refresh rate gaming. This is where you're going to want that uh, very, very quick response time on your monitor. You're going to want to have that good colors, good contrast, 280 nits brightness. So this is going to work in most rooms, you know, decently lit rooms. If it's a super bright area, you may consider the brighter monitors. That I'm going to show you a little bit later. So my floor is about that 300 range. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than that usually. And then if you go higher for creator stuff, you can get into the 500s. And I'm just like knocking over weeds and everything. So OSD here, I can go ahead and turn the volume down if I want. Let's just push that and <laughs> there we go. Almost ran over some people. I hope Amazon doesn't get me in trouble. But yeah, this is their 25 inch class, dual display port, dual HDMI. The display ports are gonna be the ones that are up to the 240 Hertz. The HDMIs, uh, I believe they only go to 144, but I'd have to double check on that. I know they at least do 120 because that's what I'm doing on my Xbox here. I'm um, taking a look for questions. I don't see any questions here yet. <laughs> uh, Restream support is trying to get back to me because we had a streaming problem earlier. Uh, but yeah, another quick thing. If you are going to use a flat panel with your Xbox, this was kind of funny because one of my friends, Ty, he would crush it in Call of Duty on the Xbox, and he always used a PC monitor instead of a television. And it's the low latency that the monitors always had. I never understood why he was so good. Well, that and he played a lot. But <laughs> one of the things you need to do is go down here to settings on your Xbox. Come down here to the TV and display options. And this is where you can set the resolution and the refresh rate. Let me see if I can get you guys a better view of this from the side. So the, that's what you're going to want to do is go to your TV settings and display options. And you can go over here and see all the different video modes it supports. You know, it does have the variable refresh rate. So that's another feature that's in this is that FreeSync Premium. You go down to refresh rate and you bump that up. So it starts at 60, just so you know. It starts at 60 right out of the box. Um, so make sure that you bump that up. And then you're going to get that faster refresh rate in all those games. So that's where you set it up for Xbox. I'm going to go back here, and I think the next one that I want to pull out is the 27-inch version. Now, this is a curved monitor, and all of the ones, yeah, I'm going to see if I can show you that today. Those are curved just like that. So that's a 1500R curve. Uh, we're going to go to the 27, but I do have to bring up a couple things. I'm going to show you the, quickly just the unboxing of this so you can see how simple these are to set up when you get them shipped to you. So there's the uh, specs on this one. I'm going to show you real quick that unbox video that I promised. So this is the C25 unbox. There's a really good looking guy who was unboxing this earlier. I'll just kind of narrate as we go because there is no sound on it. So it's going to come with a couple different pieces for the tripod base or the, the stand. Really easy to put together. And they come with these great little red screwdrivers, which I love. <laughs> I have a collection of them now. Uh, yeah, it, very simple. Three screws here and you're ready to go. I always recommend leave your flat panels, especially the curved ones, inside that packaging because that supports and protects them while you're doing the work. And there we go. I just boot this thing up and get the connections going. And there's my Xbox. So <laughs> just wanted to show you guys that. And yes, I was loading Starfield earlier on that one. 
Um, let's go through here. The next one up is going to be the 275. So the 275 is a curved one. It's available right now also at my Amazon shop. If you go down there and visit, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. If you guys want to see another one of these before the end of the show, let me know. I'm going to put these off to the side. Now that C25 or C27 was actually damaged in shipping. I'll show you the pictures because it makes me really sad now. So I actually have the non, let's see if I don't damage this one. I have the non-curved one. And the only reason I subbed this one out is it's exactly the same specs on the panel. And if I show you the difference here on the overhead camera, you can see that thing is perfectly flat. Now, if you're doing a lot of office work and you're real close up, I don't mind having a flat monitor. Like I said, 27 is right at that inflection point where you might go one way or the other, curved or non. Above 27, I definitely love the curved panels. So this is a 27. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. This just happens to also be so where you've got that number up there, the C275B. If you're looking on Amazon, this is the E275 that I'm showing you right now. And it's just because the other one got damaged. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in. This one happens to have on this model specifically three HDMI and one display port, but they're all going to have a mix and match of those display ports uh, versus HDMI. Your display ports are usually always going to be your fastest. So again, biggest difference here is I now have a bigger screen to play on. <laughs> so it's a couple inches in the way that they measure monitors diagonally. A couple inches can mean a lot of screen real estate, right? So uh, definitely useful here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Green's checking in. He says, I have experience with the Scepter 30 1080 ultra wide, 200 hertz. That was the one that started my channel. What a great monitor, right? And then a 35 inch 1440 100 hertz and the 22 1080 75. So he's got a collection of monitors in there. Um, and I told him to stick around because uh, if he, he sees this 34, he might be tempted to upgrade with the 165 hertz. Oh, somebody just blew by me. So again, high refresh rate. We're at 120 hertz here on the uh, Xbox. This one here has the older OSD. Now, I don't know if the C27 uh, has the new OSD or on-screen display, I should say. Uh, I believe it does. So I think this was just because I had this one in my stock and this is an older model, uh, the flat panel one. But if you're looking for a larger size, this definitely fits that bill. And I'm going to go ahead and show you just a couple other pictures while we're waiting here. <laughs> so that's the unit there. This is what happened to the other one. And uh, I'll point this out. If you look very carefully, the box is on the far right. And Amazon is going to take care of you. Scepter will take care of you if anything happens like this in delivery. But if you look where it says exceptional and free sync, that looks to me like a hand truck dolly. It's like the, this thing got to be on the bottom of the dolly and maybe got a bunch of weight put on top of it. And then the guy yanked back because it actually cracked the screen on here. So they've got plenty of padding in their boxes. But that's why I wanted to show you why I couldn't show you the C27. It wasn't anything you know wrong with the manufacturing. It was literally damaged and shipping. So I'm going to show you. Um, actually, I don't have an unbox. I was thinking I might have an unbox uh, for that one. But I don't have an unbox of the 27 because of that failure. So this one is the same specs. It's going to be the 1080p on 27 inches. And I can hear people asking already. They're like, OK, well, why is it not 1440? Well, if you ask me it, and anyone in the chat, you're more than willing to you know, put out your favorite game. But if you're going to get a 240 hertz monitor, you're going to need a gaming PC or something like that one that can keep up. So I'm going to get that back to our stat screen. So that's one of my gaming machines. And I can squeak out over 200 FPS in a certain select group of titles, but not every one of them, especially not Warzone and some of these really other competitive games. Maybe Fortnite I can do, but I could have to do it at 1080. 1440 as a resolution uh, just starts to get logarithmically harder to do. And 4K, forget about it. If you can show me a $1,000 to $1,500 gaming PC that can do 4k at over 200 in a triple a title. I'll buy it for you. You know, <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think about that. Hey, I see another creator checking in Jonathan talks hardware. He saw my, uh, uh, you know, preview picture of my front door where I sent all the monitors out on Twitter and he was excited about that one. <laughs> 
So yeah, it's definitely, uh, oh, here, we got Pinky Tech saying, what about Valorant? Yeah, is that a AAA title? I don't know. CSGO, uh, you could probably pull 200 off, right? But uh, that's the idea. So these are definitely budget-friendly monitors. If you were looking to play, you know, those games at that high of a refresh rate, you're probably going to have to spend a lot more on your computer. The nice thing about this is at 1080 on 27, for the games that we're playing here, and let me get back out of these. I want to see if I've got some other games that we can try. Definitely not Jurassic World, right? Let's see if we're back on Starfield. <laughs> so in these games that are immersive, you're not going to notice the pixels, to be honest. When you're flying around a spaceship, you're landing, you're checking out the scenery, you're not going to notice the pixels at the distance that we would normally uh, start on. Let me see if I can do that set course. Will it do that? Show me. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so set landing target A. There we go. And can I do missions? Oh, see I, see, I got myself backed out on here on this one, and I don't want to do that. See, it's going to send me all the way back here. So there we go. Just had to hold it. Okay, so yeah, when you're flying around like this, and let me get the glare off of this thing. When you're fly, flying around like this, you're not going to be pixel peeping at 240 hertz and trying to figure out you know what's better and what's not. You know, these are uh, definitely a great gaming resolution. If you were doing a lot of, you know, maybe creative stuff and really fine photo detail, maybe you'd want to go 1440. But this is definitely right in the gaming uh, area. Just taking a look real quick. <laughs> Mr. Guillotine says, so yeah, budget monitors are appreciated. Yes, something that can be in that 1080 range of resolution is going to be a lot easier on your gaming machine. And I'll show you Forza Horizon on my gaming machine if I can get this all dialed in, right? We'll, we'll wait till we get the big boy out, uh, the 32. I'm loving this monitor. And then we can talk about that. But this is a 27. By comparison, I'll bring out the 25. We'll just put them right side by side here. And you can kind of see the difference. And this is a curve, so it's going to be a little bit narrower. I'm going to try to get them as close as possible. And I'll try to get the bottoms lined up here. So you're getting a little bit of screen real estate difference. You can see it's a little bit taller. It's definitely going to be a little bit wider um, than the curved version itself. And so the curve is going to add a little bit of, uh, or shorten a little bit the horizontal. But uh, both of them excellent sets. Again, both of them on sale right now for Prime Days. I can tell you that the uh, 25 is 23% off. It's $35 off of the list price. Um, the other one, the 27, is $50 off of the list price. It's 22% off. So pretty decent sale amounts right now. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy down below. And then I'm going to show you uh, the third monitor that we have up. So again, very similar monitors. All three of the, the first ones I'm going to show you here, all curved, all 240 hertz. They're going to work with Mac. They're going to work with PC. They're going to work with Xbox. And they're going to work with PlayStation. Um, neat thing about that is they all have four inputs. There's no USB Type C on this. Again, when you're talking about Type C and KVMs and all this other stuff, you're definitely in a, a different class of monitor. But these ones, at what they are, will allow you to connect up to four devices. S keep on your Display Port if you want the highest frame rate. So I'm going to pull out the 32, and maybe I should do the size comparison of the 32. This was to me amazing now i don't try to say exact prices because the videos uh that we have here on amazon get replayed i don't want to feel bad if you missed a, a price but an incredible value look at the size of this set <laughs> that's a 55 inch tv back there this is a 32 inch monitor and it looks bigger isn't that amazing the perspective angle it is also curved now this is an 1800 r curve if this was a 1500 it would be folded in a lot more so they've kind of relaxed the curvature a little bit here. This is on the 32, so I'll get the uh, thing lined up here. So this is the 32, 240 hertz. It's 1080p as well. And I guess I hear people like, oh, it's 1080, oh, I want, I want higher. Like I said, what's interesting about this is this monitor at uh, 1080 is the same as a 65 inch at 4K. So if you're happy with your home 65 inch at 4K playing games in 4K, this is going to look the same. Now, 
you might sit at a little bit of a different distance. And I would recommend on something this large, sit back a little further, right? <laughs> Let me get the power hooked up to it. I'm going to go ahead and pull the PlayStation out for this one. There is an interesting thing I also read about the PlayStation, and I have not tested this on my PlayStation yet, but I actually heard that they support now 1440p resolution. So we're going to see that here. Let me get you all switched over to the right camera here as I pull this up. So I'm going to use my regular HDMI cable. I'll just have to swap it to the PlayStation. And I'm going to go into the HDMI 1 port on this. This is an HDMI 2.0. There's a bunch of different HDMI versions. Let me show you the back of this monitor real quick. <laughs> the curvature on this thing is great. It's so funny. So again, there's the four inputs, two display port, two HDMI. It does have the audio output. This one also has speakers, has the menu system. But let's do this. Let's get it back facing towards you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and turn my PlayStation on. And it's probably going to complain and be like, oh, you didn't turn me off properly last time. My poor PlayStation, it gets it gets shut off hard a lot. So let's see if this guy is starting up over here. There we go. I see a blue glow, so that should be a good sign. <laughs> and it says no signal yet. Come on, baby. Downloading a ton of updates last night for these. I'm going to check the chat real quick while we're doing this here. Yeah, actually, uh, so Mr. Guillotine is saying Scepter tends to be decently priced regardless of what sales event is going on. Let me go ahead and while this thing's getting started up. Oh, there it goes. So it says, yeah, I, I was not good to my PlayStation when I shut it down. So the PlayStation starting up, but look at the size of this screen. Again, unless you're a, uh, we call them pixel peepers, unless you're somebody that's looking down to the pixel by pixel level, let's see if I can hide this sufficiently so that you guys don't <laughs> know my password here. So there we go. Um, I was playing God of War. Oh man, this looks so good. I actually have to turn the brightness down. Let me go ahead and show you guys what that looks like here. Oh, did I hit the right button? Okay, this again has the brand new OSD. We're automatically at 120 hertz. I'm actually, my brightness is so high on this one. I'm going to have to turn the brightness down. So the backlight is at 80 here, but uh, my studio just tends to blow out everything. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit, probably down into the 20s. There we go. It's starting to look good. And I can actually start to play my game that I was playing last night. I can resume my game. Uh, so this is God of War. This is the, the console edition that I got with my digital console. But this is going to work again. Uh, what we're finding now more and more is that people are having a PC, but also a console. We're not kind of one or the other. We're usually both. And what a good looking game this is. Um, I'm sitting, honestly, like right about here. I can't see the individual pixels anyway on a 1080. So for people that are worried about that, like we said, of the resolution, there's the size of this monitor. It is enormous here. Let's see if I can jump down. Well, let me jump down. There we go. Oh, come on. I want to jump down on here. I just worked my way up here, but I want to do something cool with the fountain that they have. Well, let me jump. Or do I have to climb over? Oh, it's not letting me do it. Oh, well. But yeah, so the God of War definitely looks good on this one. Uh, tons of capability. If we go into the OSD here, I just want to see on this one what features it has. Some of these have, and I don't know if this is the model that does it have the picture in a picture. I think they might have gone with that for the 240 hertz on here. So I don't see it under picture. Let's go down to system. Uh, okay, overdrive settings, overdrive and free sync and all those other capabilities. Let me pull this closer so you guys can see it. So those are, are where we control them. Um, we have the OSD location. I love this new OSD, like I mentioned here. So we have all that. So this one does not do the picture in a picture, it looks like. It does have the built-in speakers. We can mute those out if we want. It does have several different modes. One thing I'll say, when you're unboxing this thing and you get it out the first time, it may look a little dim and it's not you... It's not the monitor. It's actually just the default power settings are on eco. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. 
So I'm actually going to show you the unboxing here of this big boy. So the box on this is pretty big, <laughs> but it is manageable. When you're taking these things out, the accessories lay on one side and the curvature is already going to be on the bottom side. So make sure you, when you're taking it out, that you have the accessories facing up. Uh, there's a little label on some of these. Very similar stand here. Now, these are non-adjustable stands, so it's going to only have tilt. It's not going to have up and down like some of their other models. The Scepter's got a ton of other models if you want to see those for that. Uh, this one takes five screws total, three on the bottom, and then two here on the back. It does have a Visa mounting uh, back on here, so you can mount the Visa directly to the back here. Uh, and there's screws for that. So that's going to do really well. And then your IO is actually away far enough, believe it or not, so that you're not going to have any issue. And then you can see me like, you know, really, really excited about this new OSD. <laughs> so just taking a look here. Uh, <laughs> good question came in. When do we get the uh, 52, uh, 5120 by 1440, 120 hertz, 49 on the show floor? <laughs> it's going to be a while for that one. Trust me. <laughs> I love that. So I'm going to showing you this with a PlayStation. I'm actually just going to unplug my PlayStation. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to show you Horizon, Forza Horizon, sorry, on the gaming PC back here. <laughs> I got to go uh, one back. Sorry, we skipped ahead to the good stuff. I'm going to go one back to this guy. I'm going to go back to our gaming PC and I'm going to swap this out. And I'm actually going to start up Forza Horizon at 1080p so you guys can see it. I got to take, unfortunately, my sign out to do that because my video card only has one HDMI output and I'm about to use it. There we go. Okay, so I'm plugging my HDMI output into this guy. And then I'm going to say... Let me make sure I got this right. Oh, okay. So I'm going to have to go back here. It is actually still thinks I have two monitors plugged in, which I did. Okay. So that is this. And we're going to go Horizon. Forza Horizon. Now, unfortunately, I can't play this for you. But I can bring the game up here. And I may, if I still have my, yeah, my USB. Uh, this game plays so much better on PC when you actually have a console cable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and use a uh, controller. Yeah, it's hard to, to modulate throttle with a keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in. There we go. And again, speaker is built in. So it detected that automatically and it started it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down on this just because I don't want the distraction of it. So there is the size of that and the, the clarity of this display. Black's really good on this. You can see how dark the black is. It's actually better than the blacks there on my $1,200 TV. Now I can actually turn this down a little bit because I still think that the backlight is a little bit hot, especially for this game. So a lot easier to navigate this new version of the OSD that they have, like I mentioned. So I'm really excited about that. Just getting used to where all the buttons are. And so there's my Forza Horizon. What I can actually do, and this might be easier, is I can run their benchmark mode. Let's see if it will let me do that. No. There we go. I'm gonna go to options. I'm gonna go into graphics. Now I've got it on high and what I wanted to do is basically do a test here to show you guys, uh, especially the people that are wondering, I have a 12700 with an RX 6800. So this is not by any stretch of the imagination, a slouch on a gaming machine here. Uh, so I'm at 1080p and I've unlocked the frame rate and I've turned VSync off, but I am going to show you the FPS here and we're going to be in full screen mode, but I'm going to go ahead and run their benchmark on here while we're here. Takes about two to three minutes, but one, we get to see something really cool on this display. Now, this display does not have any RGB on the back, uh, but honestly, it's so big, I don't know what you would do. Uh, you'll get to see it on the next one that we've got some pretty good ones. On the back side of this, it does actually have kind of a new red, uh, you know, chevron almost in the corner 
that we'll see. So they're starting to do a new different style. Just taking a look real quick. <laughs> oh, here we go. Somebody was talking about, uh, again, playing on consoles. You can see how horrible it is. So, you know, got to plug the controller in. Uh, it is one feature of the Xbox. It's nice. So you can see the clarity on that screen, the jet black blacks that they're talking about. Now, I can read them off. I'm getting about 165 FPS right now. And it's jumping between here, 180. So I am able to break, again, at 1080, I'm able to break past 165. So the frame rates are increasing. We do have that variable refresh capability that's in there. There's FreeSync Pro on this uh, monitor. There's a FreeSync Premium, I believe, on this one. Uh, but we'll double check that over at Amazon. Super fun. You can see how fast a game like this is frame rate. So it's a perfect game for 200, 240 hertz. Maybe your machine is faster than mine. I don't know. You know, I'm just a YouTuber. What would I know, right? <laughs> so I've built some pretty nice machines also, and I've got some faster video cards that can even do better than this. But honestly, if you're spending $1,500 or $1,000 on a gaming machine, you know, this monitor for what it's going at right now is an excellent companion for that. Uh, again, multiple inputs for multiple devices. So somebody asked me earlier on Discord what my favorites were. My 25, that first one is such an amazing value. That would be great to me, especially if you don't have a lot of room for a massive monitor. The second place for me is this guy. This guy is so big. Let me see if I can go to the side screen here and let you guys see that a little bit more. Look at the size of that display. You know, again, for less than half the price of a console these days, you get a just gorgeous monitor. Look at that color. This this camera always shows colors better. And we got our stats. I achieved 167 FPS, 1080p high on what is probably close to a 12 to $1,300 machine. So I'm not able to even get past 200, 240 hertz. Um, so that's just, again, showing you when people are like, oh, why isn't it 4K? Why isn't it 1440? I could bump it over to 1440 and, and down sample and you'd actually see that I'll get even worse. So that's another really important thing. <laughs> oh, somebody in here saying, yeah, I still have the 1650 super, you know, that's a good card. I still like that card for 1080 gaming, but you're probably going to be in the hundred uh, Hertz refresh range. <laughs> so <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that monitor is massive. Yes, it is. I'm six feet tall and I, I cut off most of the bottom of this, but this is a big monitor. Again, my wingspan, you can see. Yeah, it's a, it's a big display. Definitely like that. If you have any questions specifically about this, I'm looking here real quick through the chat. If you have any questions specifically about any one of these monitors or the features, let me know. We'll take a look at them. I'm going to run real quick back over to Amazon just because I want to show you that. And I'm going to turn the volume down on this. I tell you, it's nice having speakers, but then I get surprised. It's like, oh, that thing's still playing. And let me get out of the benchmark here so you can just see it running. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull Amazon back up and get back over there for you. So again, this is the 25 inch and there's the pricing you can see on that. All of them are actually on the same screen. So I'm just going to jump to the next one. This is the 27. The 25 and the 27 are so incredibly close to each other, just screen size differences. So not much difference on this right now. Uh, this is one of the lowest prices that it's ever had. And then if we go over here, the one I've got in front of me right now is actually still curved. So if we go over here, you get a different picture of it. You can see that it's curved. Go ahead and close this. So uh, it's $50 off, 20% off right now. And here's another thing, 4.5 uh, stars. Again, great reviews on this current batch of Scepter Monitor 2, which is another great thing. Let me go ahead and take a look at the chat. I think we got a question in here. <laughs> uh, would these be good for more than gaming, some light photo editing from time to time? I usually try to stick to IPS. You know, that's a great question. I'm going to bring that up here and I'm going to stop the share real quick. Um, fantastic question on the YouTube side from Mr. Guillotine. So would these be good for more than just gaming? Absolutely. If you're a creator, you can use one of these. If you're a starting out creator, screen size helps a ton when you're doing a lot of video editing. The color accuracy, I've shown it before. If you want to get a colorometer, color emitter, you get one of these. You can calibrate these things down. I'll just show it on the side camera here for you. Great question, by the way. Uh, so that's a data color spider. If you're really worried about getting something, you know, a budget monitor, use the extra money you save on a calibrator and you're going to be great. You know, a lot of YouTube creators uh, are using 
this or less, or even on a laptop display, you really don't have any control over that. Um, so this would work for multiple purposes. The other thing is if you've got a dorm room, this is why I say this is my number two. Uh, if you've got a dorm room and you're going to have television, maybe you want to throw a fire TV on the back of this, you know, fire TV stick plugs right in. I actually use one of these in our boat. We went camping on our boat. It's big enough for that. So I have a, I have a 12 volt scepter, 22 inch with a fire TV stick in it. And it's great because I know if it gets damaged or anything, I can replace it really easily but we actually watch movies on it all the time and we just use a fire TV stick on one of the inputs. So this thing's got the inputs that you'd need to have a PS five an Xbox, a fire TV stick, and maybe a gaming console plugged into, or sorry, uh, and your regular PC plugged in on the display port. So that works out really well. Great question on that. Um, P3 color gamut. That's a whole nother question here. When you talk about the DCI P3, uh, or, you know, SRGB, you go through all these different things. There are monitors that go higher. Now this back here just happens to be my nebula. Um, this is a thousand nits brightness. It's going to be 165. They have it available, I believe, but, um, that is a definitely different class of monitor. It's almost twice the price of the other, uh, monitors here or, or more, I think. Uh, and that one would be a great creator's monitor as well. But I do know one of the people that's in the chat here, uh, Pinky Tech, he has two of the 27 IPSs and they work really well too for both gaming and this. So today the focus is on that super high speed, 240 Hertz refresh rate. This demonstration and specifically why I picked this demonstration more than anything is it's really hard at even at 240 Hertz uh, to max out these monitors. So these monitors are gonna last you through several video card upgrades, I think, uh, before you ever decide to upgrade your monitor again. I think 240 hertz should be enough for anyone. <laughs> there we go. Um, and Steam Deck com com uh, compatible. Hey, you know, that's a great question, Jonathan. Uh, I didn't even think about that. I don't have my Steam Deck anymore. I had it for like a week and I sold it. I just... I didn't think I was going to use it and it was kind of buggy in the very beginning. So uh, I would say it is because it's HDMI. So it should be able to output that. I think you might have to get a USB-C to HDMI adapter for that, but it should work for it. Uh, I'm going to unplug this and then I'm going to get us our next one real quick. Give me one second. And I am going to use on the next one, my PC. And the reason for it is it's an ultra wide. So let me get this back out. This is the last big monitor of the show. And I tell you, when I unbox this thing, <laughs> you should have seen my face light up. Let me see if I can actually get you guys the unboxing video because it is important on this one. It's gonna, gonna have to plug in a few different things here. One second. I got my TV playing it now up here. Give me one second. Okay. Let me get this for you. This is the unboxing video. Hopefully it's all queued up here and you guys will get to see it. So this is the unboxing of the C34. This is an ultra wide monitor, beautiful monitor. You can just tell by the size of the box, how much different that is. And we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons here in a second. But as it comes out of the box, you'll see again, another tripod base base on something like this. It's such a great value. I would use a couple of those extra dollars I saved and get a monitor arm. It does have the visa mounting adapter in there. Make sure you don't lose that little cross looking adapter because that's going to be really valuable later. Very easy to assemble. Again, curved monitors, leave them in the box. When you're doing that, you're just going to have a few screws there. Um, let me get myself out of the way here because this thing is such a beautiful display. You go back there. Let me go back there to this one. So this is such a beautiful display, ultra wide, 3440 by 1440 resolution. Uh, it is hard to beat this display. If there were a, a contest here on displays, this one might actually be my favorite non 240 right now. Um, for creators, again, you get a little bit higher pixel resolution. The other thing about ultra wides is 21 by nine. It's basically two monitors. You can take your browser dock one to one side, another browser on the other side. Um, I love to split them up that way. Another thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my ultra wide, or sorry, my uh, PC, because that PCs are really gonna be the ones that take advantage of the ultra wide. The PS5, like I said, just was just reading about it, that it's now offering ultra wide support. 
which is one of the first consoles to ever do that. Though I think that there's going to be some stretching and other issues in certain games. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in. And once that starts up, I'm going to show you one of my favorite games to play on this thing. Let's get it fired up here. While we're looking at it, look at the size of that. Oh my gosh. Now, sadly, you're not going to see the whole display until we load a game here, but it will work in Windows. Again, I can uh, shrink Windows down for you here. Um, actually, I'm going to have to do... Bring it over sideways. This one is actually too bright. Um, I'm going to have to use the joystick on it. Does have the new on-screen display, new OSD, but this is the joystick-based version, so even easier to use. I'm going to have to turn the backlight down. So all I'm doing here, and I'll, I'll bring you guys over on the side here. I'm using this joystick. Let me get that without tipping it over. I'm using this joystick to actually just change the on-screen display, but you can see the, the massive size horizontally that this is. So if you don't have a lot of room uh, in your space, you can use something like this. Again, to take advantage of that, I'm going to go ahead and launch Fortnite, <laughs> my favorite, to take advantage of this ultra-wide size. Now, you can see Windows, my Windows 11 taskbar is only that big. That's all of my buttons on Windows 11 right now. So this has definitely got a shorter height stance than that 32. It's a little bit wider than the 32. I don't even know if I can get both of them on, on screen here at once. But the games will automatically adapt to this. So this should not look stretched out when we get the game set up for it but i can tell you one thing and one reason i love look at the side you can see how much extra you're getting you're basically getting another half monitor of a horizontal view another thing i love about this especially games like fortnite which take advantage of this is your a third person shooter like fortnite let me see if i can get my mouse here when i have a third person shooter like fortnite <laughs> I'm going to do a private game just so I don't mess with anybody right now. Uh, but when you have a game like this, you're going to be able to see around corners. You're going to be able to, to peek around a corner and see a guy because it's actually going to give you the view angle is going to be much hard, uh, better. Oh, says audio was cutting in and out. Hopefully it's still working great. Uh, sorry about that, Jonathan. If it was, let me know if you guys have any sort of audio issues still. I can maybe take a look, <laughs> but it's just loading up right now. I'm actually going to go using their on-screen display. Oh, I love that, the way that it works here. Will it do key repeat, though? When I'm doing my down volume, I have to keep hitting it. That's that's a drawback. So maybe that's an update for the next one, is if I'm pushing downward on the volume, that it, it does a key repeat. That would be a nice automatic here. So uh, go ahead and start this one. There we go. Okay. So like I said, the aspect ratio is the same of the regular game, right? So you're... you're characters and everything look different but you're now getting to see this much more and the way that this was so telling is i was playing there you go you can see how much wider i can see around that left side that would normally be hidden if this side of the monitor was cut off or that side of the monitor was cut off right you wouldn't get to see people moving around or things going by right so that's an important uh distinction here let me go ahead and pull this up on the side here so uh first person shooter games ultra wide is one of my favorites <laughs> i'm just gonna run around here for a little bit just so you can kind of get a look and feel of what this is so this is tilted or if you can go drive a car amazon doesn't like violent video games but they do like let me go over here i'm gonna get in the ball because he's kind of fun but again if you're peeping around a corner here you can see out of both sides of this, you can see basically how wide this is. I'm seeing both sides around this little building because of the size of this monitor. Normally, I would not be able to get a view that is that wide. So it almost looks more than 90 degrees at that point. So uh, I guess it's almost cheating, technically, <laughs> if you were to say that. Uh, let me see here. Got a question in the chat about wall mounting. Looking great here. <laughs> Oh, Green, I'm sorry about that. This is a better price than mine was. Green was telling us earlier about his 100 hertz version of this. Uh, he has, I think, the C34, um, the 100 hertz, or 35, the 100 hertz one. But uh, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and Jonathan Talks Hardware's checking in. He says, that's a big boy monitor. Yeah, it is. I don't know if they're going to get this one back. You know, honestly, you can see how much different that is. So behind me in the studio, and I'll try to move out of the way. I have my 27 Nebula. That's what I edit with. But, you know, I'm thinking maybe I could upgrade to this. That would look really good back there. 
and it would be good enough to do creator editing. Like I said, you could calibrate this. This is a VA panel as well. Let me go bring up the, the tail of the tape on this one real quick. And I'm going to have to unplug this guy. Sorry. Just getting used to the new setup here in the studio, but hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you guys like to see all the cool stuff that we're doing. Now it's bringing up Fortnite on my <laughs> non widescreen. I wonder if it'll automatically readjust or if it's going to stretch. Actually, that would be really fun as I could have shown it up on there. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get back over here. Now we're going to get past that. Um, I want to go to the stats page and I'm going to show you guys the stats on these ones. Actually, let me go forward to the stats page. Here we go. So this is the stats on this panel right here. And it is 13. Sorry, it is 3440 by 1440. So it's 1440p, but it's ultra wide 1440p. So it's a wider resolution than you normally get. It's a VA panel. There's another really interesting thing about it, which is the brightness. So if you were looking for a higher brightness, we mentioned this as well. If you were looking for a little bit more brightness, this one's got 400 nits of brightness, which is a great amount of brightness, even in a, a well lit room. You know, a lot of the MacBooks for a long time were just 500 nits. You know, they've gone crazy now with the HDRs and all that. But, you know, the base MacBook was 500 nits, and that was considered super bright for a laptop. So this is uh, pushing 400 nits, which is great. Ultra wide gaming is what I would say. You can also do office stuff with this because it does simulate two monitors. You can go ahead and do the left and the right dock. Um, it is, like I said, curved. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like on the top down view. I'll get some stuff out of the way for you. So there's the curvature of this one. So if you saw the other 32, the curve was not that aggressive. I bet you if we go take a look at the Amazon page for this one, that the curvature is going to be listed on there. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. This feels like it's going to be 1500 or it's just that much wider. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So this is the Amazon page here. Um, this is going to be a curve. Yeah, it's a 1500 radius curve. So that's that R that you're seeing. Let me get me back on screen here. Hey, everybody. If you're just tuning in, it's John the Net Guy. We're taking a look at some budget 240 hertz gaming monitors for your new PC setup. I'm also showing you right now a pretty slick little monitor. This is the 34 inch 165 that's also on sale today. So there's the pricing on it. It is 13% off. It's $40 off of the normal price, which is already a great value. Let's take a quick look on these, make sure I'm not missing anything that I should have shown you here. Let's take a look at the IO. It's always so much easier for me to show you guys IO stats on the back. So this one is going to have the dual display ports. It's going to have the audio out and it's going to have the two HDMIs. They do make a whole different line of ultra wide. So if you need super high resolution, they've got those two. Um, if you're looking for budget, my whole channel started on that 30 inch, 200 Hertz. But honestly, I think the pricing is really, really close now. So this one gives you that higher resolution that people were asking for, but it's also going to be uh, a 34 instead of a 30. Uh, the stand on it, like I said, probably some place that could be improved if there was an improvement, but the money that you're going to save on this thing, buying it, you know, at this price, you could get a nice gas strut monitor arm. These things are not very heavy at all. I'd have to go look at the stats on it, but I don't think it's much more than 12 to 15 pounds. So any arm is going to handle that. No problem at all. Um, so I'm going to take a quick look at the chat. I think we had another couple questions in there. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. Um, looking good. <laughs> Uh, that would take up my tiny desk. It's, my cat would not be happy. I think somebody's trolling me now. Uh, would not be happy with me if I bought that one. Yeah, that's a fantastic monitor. Like I said, you know, I have not seen monitors in these price ranges. The price of monitors overall is coming down, but Scepter's kept up with that. And I think that they're incredibly good at delivering value on this one. So um, this one, if you're looking for an ultra wide right now for the holidays, um, maybe it gets cheaper by the end of the year. I don't know, but at this price, this is a fantastic value as well. So I'm going to check a couple more things. Then I think we're going to get wrapped up here. We've been going about an hour, a little over an hour here in just a second. Um, I don't see any new questions on here and I think I covered most of them. Let me go show you just since we're here, I'll show you some fun stuff. We'll go back over here. Uh, what my day has been like. <laughs> This is what I came home to. 
that was the stack of monitors. Now, there's a couple other monitors in there that you didn't see tonight, uh, specifically a 24 and a 27 that are in there um, that you're going to get to see more about later. So we'll talk about those in the future. Um, this has been John the Net Guy again. We're doing a show here for Scepter Monitors. I want to thank them again for sponsoring the show, making it possible for me to bring you this great content. Um, I'm going to give you a couple just side to side looks at what the monitors look like since we've got them here in person and it's rare to have this many monitors. So this is the 34 ultra wide and I'm just going to for size comparison show you what a 24 and a half looks like next to it. So again, almost the same size vertically. This one's got a little tiny bit more in it. Remember how I said you're getting almost two monitors here? If I hold it up, that's one. <laughs> That's a little, almost one and a half, right? You know, a little one and three quarter. So that's the largest to the smallest monitor we have here, right? So that's the the ultra wide. I get, I think everybody is there like, don't drop them, John. Don't drop them. And I'm, I'm trying not to either. Let me get some of the trip hazards out of the way. I'm going to put this down and then I'm going to grab us the 32. Because again, I think that one for a kid's room or a dorm room, that one, that 32 could be with a just a very simple fire stick added onto it and i'm sure they're blowing those out they always do for the amazon specials if you just had a fire stick to go with this 32 this would be one of the best all arounds there we go <laughs> so this is the big boy 32 this is the 16 by 9 version Again, very small bezels on the sides of these. I didn't mention that much, but um, these monitors are getting thinner and thinner these days. It's going to be a little uh, <laughs> hard to understand this, but because, again, the, the panel is so thin on the edges, it's just the support they had to do. But take a look at this guy. Look how thin that panel is, you know, side by side with the 24. And then if I do this guy with this one in front... Now, the perspective is going to be weird because I'd have to move this one a lot further back for you to see them directly. But the 32 is a significant amount bigger. Let me know in the chat what you guys are <laughs> looking like. So there it is side by side. You can see the curves here. This one does have a less aggressive curve. That was something we were talking about earlier. And I can show that now finally because I have them side by side. So hopefully you guys can see the difference. So this one is going to have that 1800 radius curve. This one's going to be the 1500 radius. Now the ultra wide 34 is on a 1500 radius. So it is definitely a tight 34. I like that too for gaming. Um, other things that you might want to consider. So ultra wide monitors, great for first person shooters, just because of that peak, that looking capability I was telling you about. Um, I've seen them used for racing simulators. So these are great, uh, but the curvature on this one may not be as tight as you want if you're trying to make an immersive simulator. So either the 27 or the 34, I've seen a lot of 327 setups for the iRacing uh, or any sort of Microsoft flight sim. So very good. <laughs> and uh, Green saying you can get a cheap cast spring monitor for uh, 18 to $24. So any one of these would definitely be held up and they're all visa mountable, which is great. Uh, another feature from Scepter, even on their lowest end, you know, products, they seem to have visa mounting capability, which is great. Um, this has been John the Net Guy. I don't see any other questions in the chat here for me. I do appreciate you guys checking in. I do want to thank Scepter for providing these monitors. You will see more content like this on my channel. We will do a deep dive into every one of these monitors. If you don't pick up the monitor today and you're still on the fence, I don't uh, I think the price is definitely going to go up after the sale here. But if you do, if you're on the fence, take a look. We're going to be putting some uh, videos out here on this channel that you're going to get to see all of the specs. We'll get the calibrator out. We'll try the input latency. We'll do all that fun stuff specifically for each one of these monitors. And with that, I appreciate you guys all. And I will catch you guys all in the next one. If I can hit the right button. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.